everybody and welcome back to Pocket Captains Presents Pixel Starships. And as you can see, I went ahead and I bumped up the to, bumped us up to level four. Now I know I said I was going to wait and do it with everybody in front of me. In fact, I did record that episode. But when I looked at it, I realized it was pretty boring just to watch me press the level up key. So I went ahead and did it anyway. And I took the moment to reconfigure the ship. Now you notice, just like I said before, I put all the more boring rooms on the bottom level that I don't need to fix during battle. And all the important rooms, I've lined them all up together so my crew can move back and forth between them and do whatever repairs are necessary. Nothing on the diagonal, nothing on slants. They can't get into those rooms. These gaps, they can't even reach them. And uh, I've picked my favorite configuration. I like to put the uh, reactors on different levels. So if somebody's targeting one or if they beam over, it's not too easy to move from one to the other. They've got to cross through the entire ship and up the elevator. The delay can save my life. I put weapons next to those. Usually they don't hit my weapons right away. Good safe place to put my crew so they can move back and forth from the repairing systems. And specialty systems like missiles and shields off to the side by themselves. So... The thing I've done when you were gone, the most important thing is I took the time to grab the command center, which is down here. Now, uh, hmm, what can I take off the ship to show you? Let's take this off for a moment. That was pretty empty. And I put the command center on. First thing I did is I've leveled it up to maximum, as you can see here. So once that was done, and I'll put my arm uh, whole container back on the ship. I went straight to the lab and I've upgraded it right to maximum. Why? Because I wanted this Python. Now I've started the level up button and this is what I do when I hit the level four. I recommend that you do the same. Level up the command center, get the lab back on, level it up and go straight for Python. Once you have that, you have access to all the AI commands you're going to need for this level. And that's going to set the stage beautifully for the next time we come back, which is going to be in your time, just a second or two, where we're going to work on upgrading weapon systems. I'm going to show you the fundamental basics of AI for weapons. So if you want to see more about that, stay tuned for just a second and we'll get right back to you. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back. And it only took you a second. For me, it was a day. But there we have it. We have completed our research on Python. It's gone, which means we're ready to use it. So let's get rid of the lab. Let's bring back our command center. And this is the bit I've been waiting for. Love this stuff. Let's talk about weapons and defense. Now, here's the thing to remember about the command center. When you're setting up the AI, you must have the command center on the ship. But when you're done, remove it and make room for like an engine or something more interesting for you. Engines do have value for dodging missiles, but you only need it when these guys are on, when you're actually doing the programming or when these guys are on board the ship, you're doing the programming, they will remember the commands you're putting in. Even if you take them off the ship, if I were to, oh, I'm not gonna do the remove that one. I need that one, I like it. But if I were to remove the missiles and they were fully programmed and I bring them back, they will remember if I remove a crew member they will remember. So don't worry too much about the command center being there or what you're typing in is going to disappear. It stays with them. But that needs to be on the ship when you're changing the AI commands. When you press this button, the AI button appears and we can go in. So let's talk about simple AI. Let's start with the missiles. In the AI panel, you can compile Babel AI logic for your rooms and curb. Commands are run in a top-down format. You know, that's just wrong that she has that voice. So here's an example one. As a matter of fact, it's not a bad one. Uh, it's very similar to the one I'm using now on my level seven ship. Increase power by one. See, this is an example of the three things you have to keep track of when you're dealing with weapons. One, how much power do you want to use to power up the weapon? You can go to maximum. Here, let me show you an example. New command. TIP AI is made up of a combination of a condition and action. The action runs only if the action is fulfilled. Think of the condition as a if. Okay. Thank you. I think I'm doing this one. And there's our condition. Oh, you just can't stop yourself. Go away. So, as you can see, I can set maximum power, set minimum power, increase power by one, decrease power by one. You can go for maximum, but that means that this system is going to be a power hog no matter what's going on in your ship at any given moment. 
I'm not sure if you're comfortable with that. I'm comfortable grabbing that Starbucks. Click. I'm not sure if you're comfortable with that. I'm not. Increasing power by one is a nice economical way of saying power up when you have the power and share with the other systems. Now, I don't necessarily, I would put this up here. It's my next thing. I like to take care of the the the, uh, the trivialities of the thing. So first I've got my power. The second is, what kind of weapon do you want me to use? Now, there's all sorts of weapons. Let's go to the new command. None, action. Let's look at the command uh, weapons we have. Well, we have an EMP. We have set highest damage. Set the dearest items. I think that's the most expensive. The cheapest items, which is what they've set now. Um, I like to be very specific. So when I go in here, I'm looking for character damage is nice. Only if you know that somebody's in the room. But they do tend to move around a lot. And by the time you fire it, remember, there is a delay on missiles. You're seeing it go across the screen. You got to wait a few beats before it appears on the enemy's ship screen and it actually starts to hit. And that's an eternity during which somebody can move away. So let's go for... Oh, hull damage. I love... Oops, sorry. Hull damage. That's a good one. Universal. Very simple. So now we're setting highest... Waiting for it to... There we go. Let's move that one up as an example. Let's get rid of the cheapest item. I want to do some damage here. It's not about saving money. And uh, what am I targeting? Well... I usually like to not target enemy random rooms. That's never good because ultimately you want to destroy the hull. And if you're going from room to room, when do you ever get around to actually taking the hull out? You're just going system to system. So let's be specific. I like the reactors. Even at this level, targeting enemy reactors will get the job done. Now, a little tip. If you're doing this, you can actually... Uh, there, there are, sorry, there are three things there that you have to set for a weapon. But what if you set two things that could be true? Like power is nothing to do with your, 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 your weapon type, which is nothing to do with what you're targeting. Those are three separate entities, so they can coexist very happily. All three of these can be true at the same time. But what if you put two things that don't get along together? Let's say no condition, and we target the laser room. Well, wait a minute now. Do you want me to attack the lasers or the reactors? Which is it? These can both be true, but not at the same time. We can't target both. How does it reconcile that? Well, if both conditions are true, it will take the first one. There's a priority to this. And the thing about it is, no matter what's going on with this other condition, because these two kind of compete, if you have two computers, it will stick with it until it's not true. And then it will go to the next true item. And it will stick with that. Now, let's say you're hammering away at the lasers and during that battle, the reactors are now fully available again. Well, it will stay with the lasers before it switches back to the reactors. So if I had a condition in here, it said, let's see. Well, first of all, when you say always true, it means no matter what, it's just going to do it. So no, no special conditions, but I can go in here and I can set a special condition. Let's say I say enemy reactor, Let's say enemy, enemy shield room greater than hundred percent. Yeah. Then I'm going to say, and I don't want to, you don't actually have to go in and, and find it again. Just say target condition room. That means whatever room I was just talking about here, Go there and do it. So if I'm talking about if the shield room's got something in it, go get it. And then we'll do the same thing for lasers. If the enemy lasers, and where are the enemy lasers hiding? The enemy lasers are right there. Okay. Action is target condition room. Now you see we got two conditions here that compete. If either one of these is true, then it will go after it, but in order of precedence. So this one's true first. Once this is no longer true, then this one will go. Oops, didn't mean to do that for you. Even if this one becomes true again, it won't stop until this one stops being true. Now, the nice thing about this layout is you can give specific commands or no special condition, which means just do it. Now, just do it is great. 
I usually like to set, or sometimes like to set, a just do it command at the bottom. But for missiles, I keep it really simple. Now you see, it's giving me a warning. Where's, where am I targeting? Give me a hint. So I'm gonna say no condition. Let's go after those reactors. And do, do, do. Enemy, oops, I'm in the condition still. I meant to go after the action. Target enemy actions, there we go. So, it's coming. There's my power setting. There's my weapons use, in this case, whichever one does the most hull damage. And this is what I'm hitting, the reactors. And I'm gonna concentrate fire. The only way I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna copy that for a moment, and I'll program it in, oh, I don't have another missile room yet. Well, I'm forgetting what level I'm on. The only way I'm gonna switch is if, for example, I'm targeting this reactor room, and then when it's destroyed, I'll go to this reactor room. But once that reactor room's destroyed, I'm gonna stay firing on that because this one's already gone until I now, I'm actually directing all my firepower out the hull, which is what I want. I want simple, clean attacks. I don't wanna move from room to room to room to room and never get around to the hull because the battles are timed. I don't have all night for a battle. So that being done, let's go ahead and, oh, there's one of our sexier weapons. Let's go look at this one. Standard fare you get, uh, just increase by power one and attack random rooms. Well, that isn't gonna get you anywhere. It's just gonna go from room to room and how are you gonna destroy a hull? So let's look at how we're gonna distribute power. But before I get too uh, deep in it, let me give you a little trick I've learned. It's, it's, it's still something I'm working on, but it seems to help. So let me go over here and there's something I want you to look at is current subject hit points less than 100%. Now it looks like it's talking about a crewman, but it's not. It's talking about the subject that's where the AI is being worked. In this case, it's the laser cannon itself. It's the subject. So if this laser cannon is less hit points or less than 100% action, go away. Oh, I wish it wouldn't do that. Sorry, I'll do that again. If, it was interrupting something really important. If its hit points are less than 100%, what I want it to do is, where's my maximum power? Set maximum power. Now, what does this do? And it'll appear in a second. Sometimes I'm attacked and my, sh and my weapons are down and I don't have full power. And this is going to appear in a minute, I hope. <laughs> Where did it go? Ah, there it is. So what I'll do is I'll move it up to here. What I want it to do is whenever it's below full uh, capability, set maximum power. Now let's say somebody's fixing it and the most they can get it up to, you know, we'll move this out of the way for a second. So when I'm down to, you know, I've been damaged, I've only got two bars here to choose from. What ends up happening is when they start to fix it, it doesn't come back all the way right away. I usually only get one bar you know, potential as it's in the process of fixing it. Well, that one bar potential is all I need because with the hit points less than 100%, it will set it to maximum potent power, which at that point is only one bar because it's less than 100%, one bar potential. So it brings it up to that one. But now I've got this, he's gone ahead and he's fixed it all the way. This is no longer true. But what I have here is none. Don't do anything all times, just increase the power by one. So I brought it back up to one bar and that brings me up to the second bar and that weapon is ready to go once again. That's perfect. It, it allows my damage systems to be rebuilt and repowered. That's all I need. Now, the only thing is that I, want, I need to get rid of is this one. I don't want it to target random rooms. I want it to target reactors. That's where the fun is in this particular scenario. So let's copy that AI. And let's share with all my friends. I can override their AI just like that. And now my ship is already getting smarter. It's not gonna be the pushover it used to be. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you upgrade your weapons. I know it's really simple and it isn't, it doesn't look like I've added very much or it's very fancy, but believe it or not, that will, that will help you through. If you don't wanna target reactors, target the lasers, but don't target all sorts of systems. Keep it simple, keep it consistent. Now, that's not the only system that can be upgraded for AI. Let's take a look at our shield grids. Shields are very handy. 
and we got here none increased power by one well you know what my shields are kind of important to me and i'm okay if they're a little greedy set maximum power heck yes suck on that power i need you to be fully juiced up we're not wasting any energy on that sort of thing um that's it for my systems if i put an engine on board um i would probably how can i show you guys how an engine would look without making things too messy engines can be handy too let's put an engine on board now i'm gonna probably upgrade that sooner or later um increase power by one that's okay that's not bad but uh, we can do better let's look at some options for an engine so let's say because we do want to share my ship has a full shield well i'm fully up and in the battle and i'm in great shape so i i don't really need a lot of power there let's share with the other systems you are now a friendly ship um let's say oh, first of all let's say i want that starbuck now let's say for my second trick uh my ship's in trouble and power is not plentiful. So let's say if uh, my reactors are less than 50%, where is the reactors? Reactors, reactors, where are you hiding? Your, I know you probably see it and you're shouting at the screen. What's the matter with you? There it is. Your reactor is less than 50%. Then let's decrease the power by one. Let's share with the more vital systems. Engines are nice, but they're not gonna win you the game. Now, here's an important one, though. Let's go, uh, for some reason, it's slow appearing. Enemy missile room hit points. Let's look at those. What are, the, what are the, your engines for? Oh, it's appeared now. Enemy missile rooms are the main reason why engines are there. Eh, enemy room hit points greater than zero. That's the one. Let's increase our power by one. Technically, the engines, the thing they're really good at is evading missiles. If you have a good engine, it will uh, dodge the missiles. I've seen a lot of missiles miss, and I've had some engines, uh, ships I've gone up against with, with two engines, believe it or not, and my missiles are just no good. What a great way to neutralize an enemy's attack by having just simply two engines on board. You don't have to attack their, their missile room, just let them fire away impotently and never hit anything. But... If no else is true, I'm going to put a default condition. Set minimum power. Realistically, if there isn't any missiles, then just power down. Power this thing down. Nothing too fancy about that. Now, you see, we've just programmed an engine. Uh, an engine that I don't really need right now. So we'll remove it. And that will be remembered. Don't worry about it. The next time we play this, it's going to know how to do that. I want my lasers back. And yes... I'll prove it to you. I'll go into my laser command, and there's all my commands. They're still there. You don't have to worry about reprogramming them if you drop something. So that's worked out really well. Uh, our ship can fight back, but what about these guys? Right now, I've got them in pretty safe default positions. I want them to be able to... Now, normally, these guys are sitting in the reactor, but I must have been doing some looking at some stuff. Normally, I got two in the reactor, two in the reactor, two in the shield room. These are the favorite targets of enemies. So I say, leave them in there, let them take some hits for the team. But maybe there's a smarter way to do this. We know that typically they don't hit the missiles or they don't hit the, the, the beam weapons. They're going after the shields to drop them so their beams can penetrate more easily. Or, excuse me for that clicking, they're going after the reactors to take your power away and shut everything off in one swoop. So I personally don't like leaving my guys in there because they die very quickly. And then who's going to be there to fix the rooms? I say, let them take a few hits. Let the room take a few hits for the team. It just makes for a better, you know, defense system. So get them out of there. You don't belong there. You don't belong there. In fact, if they're in my weapons room, they're going to help assist my weapons to fire just, oops, didn't mean to do that, a little faster and a little more effectively. So let's grab one of these guys. Let's grab, he's next to a shield room. So let's make, hmm, let's see, let's move you out of the way for the moment. 
And I'm going to designate you guys first. You are the shield guys. Your job, and, and it's important, layout of the ship goes hand in hand with the AI. So you notice how these guys are next to the shield room? These are going to be my shield guys. That's their thing. Their primary job is they're going to jump in and save that shield whenever they can, which might just save the ship. I don't want everybody rushing to the shield room, though, because they'll die on mass if that's the target. I want a primary team to jump in, fix it, jump back. But if these guys get slaughtered and the shield's really in trouble, then you guys better haul your butts up there because the ship will die if you don't. So let's go ahead and let's grab one of these guys and make them my shield guy. Now, he's got nothing going on right now. So first thing, um, let's just go no condition action. Let's see what if he's got, he's got it right there. Use your special power. Always, always, always turn this on. While it's figuring out how to do that, let me show you what it means. Now, this guy's special power is critical attack. That doesn't mean he's going to critically attack his own people. He won't do anything with it unless an enemy boards the ship. And then he will just insta-kill the guy. Same with poison gas. I have that here. I have a couple more critical attacks. How about this guy? AI? Uh, what's his thing? His thing is the rush command. I absolutely want him to rush whatever he's going to be in this weapons room. I want him to fire that thing up as fast as possible. So the first thing I would ask him to do, I'd pop in there. New command. No conditions. I just want you to do it. Pop over here. Use that special power. Do it for everybody. Everybody. They will only trigger when it makes sense. Now you could, for healers, say something about if subject's condition is less than 50%, in other words, he's personally dying, healing rain, which means he'll heal himself and maybe there's a chance he'll heal others in the room as well. That's a nice bonus. But let's go back to uh, this first one. He's activated a special power. Now he's my shield guy, right? So let's give him a shield thing. That's his primary thing. Remember, these are in order. So let's say your shield hit room's hit points and because I want him to leap in before anybody else does, your shield's hit points less than 100%. Any damage, anything at all. Target that condition room, please. Leap right in there like a gazelle and fix it. Fantastic. But what if the guy's not targeting? He never targets the shield room. Then he sits there like a twit. So we can't have that. So let's add some more. Let's say next most important thing on my list, well, my reactor. Now, I've got a couple of reactor guys, so he doesn't have to leap in there right away. And they're going to try to, you know, if it goes down at all, I'm going to have them fix it. But let's say they're dead. Well, my reactor is now below 50%. The A team is gone. Time for the B team to step in. There. Now, any damage, anything to the shield room, they're running. But they'll let the reactor room take some hits before they even blink. What about, what other key systems do we have? What about our lasers? They might go after my lasers. So let's say your lasers, again, we're not rushing. Less than 50%. That sounds smart. Let's go over here and we'll target that room. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Tough monkey. He's going to do his job. What about the missile rooms? Your, whoops. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Your missile room, where's that? And again, this might take a little bit of time while you practice it, less than 50% action. Target that room, let's go get it. So we got our lasers, we got our missiles, we got, uh, what about the ship's condition itself? What if there's something I haven't thought of? What if they go after something I didn't expect? So let's say my ship's hit points, let's say, Everything's fine. Let's do an everything's fine scenario first. So let's say you're, generally your ship overall. Where's my your ship? Your ship is greater than 50%. I've got none of those other conditions going on. I don't know what else to do. Uh, I think I'll go hang on the target reactor room. That seems like a good place to go. You don't know what else to do? Go there. I mean, or maybe not the reactor room. Maybe target... 
the missile room. Target, target your laser room. That's his default. That's right. So he's going to go hang on. The ship's otherwise okay. But what about... It's all gone to pieces now. Something's happened that we didn't plan for. Your ship is now below 50%. And it's not one of these rooms. Well, what are we going to do with this guy? Well, we need a, a default condition for if your, your ship in general is in trouble. So somewhere in this list of things is if your ship is less than 100%. Hangar's anti-aircraft room. That's very handy. That's the Python acting. But let's say ship. Your ship, your ship, your ship, your, your ship. Where's my ship? Your ship. Any room. Okay, so now some of the, well, at least your ship's below 50%, something's being hit. If any other room is being put down less than 100%, target that room. Now the order of this is really, really important. If you put this too high, they'll just run around the ship fixing anything. But this one being above it, keeps them from leaving their post to fix anything. It's only when your ship goes below 50% that this is no longer true. That they then go, find whatever, find something. I mean, let's copy that AI. It could be ridiculous. Maybe they're hitting your, your bedroom. I, I don't know why they would, but maybe they are. I didn't foresee that happening. It will, well, in this case, it won't work because there's no elevator there. But if they're going for a room I didn't predict, then that will at least cause him to go try to fix that room. Now, that's good for him. Let's go into here. He's also my sh my uh, my shield guy. So that's good. He's a happy shield guy. Now, I've got two of them. And that will work for these two guys. But uh, what about um, one of the other rooms? What about, uh, what about the reactor rooms? Those rooms are really important to me. So let's go over here, AI. Oh, by the way, you get a free AI command. Don't forget that default, as a, you don't have to program this one in. The room you start them off in is kind of like a free AI command. That's where they go. Like for example, if they're standing in this room and the first thing this guy would do is pop a rush, he's gonna pop it in this room. I didn't have to program that. It's because that's where he was standing when it happened. You get a lot of free AI thinking just by the rooms they start standing in. So it's really important to carefully choose the rooms they begin in. And I think there's a maximum to these rooms of three people. Yep, there's only three allowed. So we're gonna take the, uh, this guy, for example. We'll put him in the shield room where he's gonna go. I think they'll generally hit the reactors first, so I don't want anybody standing in the reactor room. That's very important, thanks for the buck. So let's go into here. AI, let's paste it. It will look almost exactly like the last guy, except some of the priorities are gonna change. So instead of shield room less than 100%, it's your reactor room less than 100%. That's the one she's gonna run for. And now it's your shield room less than 100%, uh, less than 50%. They're not gonna go running over Unless, you know, the house is on fire. Condition. Yep. Your shield room is right there. Less than 50%. Okay. So now we're going to let that take a few hits because there's somebody on that job. So they're not rushing over. Otherwise, it's all the same. Copy. We go over to this guy. AI. Paste. Now he's ready to defend his, his reactor room while hanging in the missile room. But if necessary, he'll bop over to the shield room. Now here's the difference. These guys down here get the exact same command except for one difference. They're not next to the shield room. They are next to the missile room. Let's look at these guys. Now they're gonna look like the others in almost every respect, post the AI, except they don't have a shield room next door. What they've got is your missile room is less than 50%. Now they're not gonna let they're gonna let them take some hits. They're not gonna run over there. Remember the reactor rooms are a big job. The missile room is okay if it takes a few. I've got redundant weapon systems. Let's go in here. Let it take a few hits. Let it take a few for the team. They will run in if it's in danger. They won't let it become uh, an incident for the enemy hull crackers to start splitting the hull open. They won't let it get that far. They'll start making repairs. 
So essentially, everybody, we programmed the AI for a level four ship. But you you shouldn't be afraid to experiment. You shouldn't be afraid to try new things. I mean, I'm continually adjusting and readjusting and playing with the AI on my ship to get it to look the way I want it to. But that should get you going, get you started. I hope it gives you a fundamental of the AI, the order the things go in, and uh, so the fact that they're not all redundant commands. Missile uh, Weapon systems do have, or at least missiles, three different aspects they've got a program for. Beam weapons are two, power, target. Over here, it's power, target, and type of weapon. And crewmen designate them based on where they're standing. Am I primarily a shield guy or a missile guy? Primary a reactor guy or, uh, or sorry, a shield guy? Move them around. Don't worry too much about putting somebody in the in the uh, the the um, bup, 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 the turret because it isn't. It's a nice little. It, it helps, but it's not that effective a weapon. So it's not the end of the world. And now that I've done my programming, get that thing off my ship. Make room for something more useful. Believe it or not, it could be as simple as the engine. But maybe, just for laughs and giggles, maybe I'll do some mining. Get my, uh, help me get my systems up. I could do combat for that, but... Eh, yeah, maybe I'll... Oh, everything's maxed out. Nothing I can do about it for now. But maybe that's where... Oh, as a matter of fact, I bet there is something I can do about it right now. How about that for timing? And there we go. Let's start maxing up our minerals. Let's build our ship up that way. After all, I don't want to crawl up the rankings too fast. So that's it for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you, you've you learned something. Uh, if you've liked this, please don't hesitate to like the video. Subscribe to us. If you want to see more tactics and strategies, go to www.pocketcaptains.com. But for tonight, it's Peter Gloat signing off. And remember, try to have a little bit of fun every day. Get more tips at pocketcaptains.com.